so good evening friends <coughs> this is once again dr vijay agarwal and the president of kaho and very very proud to be welcoming once again mr suresh dulla who is a distinguished alumnus of iit bombay and has made a mark through his work in the field of quality mr suresh lulla over a period of time especially to the kaho audience does not need much introduction but let me just say that suresh lulla is a pioneer in recognizing the importance of quality management in indian businesses kimpro has been instrumental in guiding organizations across industries to implement global benchmarks the awards conferred by kimpro are prestigious as they symbolize accomplishments in the in following best practices without doubt mr lula and his firm are synonymous with quality and strong governance ladies and gentlemen these are not only my words these are words of mr keki keki mistri who is the vice chairman and ceo of hdfc he has articulated so well that i thought let me also make advantage of what he has already articulated for mr lula so once again we are looking forward to a very enchanting session of a fable by mr lula over to you sir thank you dr vijay agarwal you always have a very charming way of introducing me and a different way each time interesting we all know dr vijay agarwal is synonymous with what national pulse polio program what an achievement he is also a kimpro platinum standard the awards he just referred to a platinum standard for the year 2019 and i i say it with a certain degree of modesty that the selection process is probably the toughest in the country or in the region the asian region and uh, we have dr vijay agarwal kim pro platinum standard 2019 now we talk about quality fables a quality fable is not about fiction and or animals these fables are based on real experiences and involve real people the fable we are going to work with today is lessons from kargil essentially what i will want to differentiate is do you schedule your priorities or do you prioritize your schedule I'll ask you the same question at the end of the fable. In end May nineteen ninety nine, the Pakistani soldiers crossed the line of control, and they reached Kargil all the way up to Tiger Hill. i underline the word tiger hill simultaneously in india we were busy keeping track with the cricket world cup in england the young prince of kolkata saurabh ganguly he was in full form we were all celebrating the indian performance because of sarav gangri 
All this was great until the radio went. There's an attack on Kargil. And this set our priorities different. The commander in chief of the defense forces took charge. He had to deal with the crisis. His vision was to restore the line of control. What stood between him and the line of control? Tiger Hill. Capturing Tiger Hill was the critical success factor. What were the resources available to the Commander-in-Chief? Army, Navy, and Air Force. The Army could not access the cliff, Tiger Hill. The Pakistanis had advanced all the way up to a cliff. In the, the Navy, was not useful in this landlocked region. The Air Force lacked aircraft that had speed and agility to strike the enemy and return, all in 30 seconds. They didn't have it. Compounding the situation was that snowfall in Kargil starts in August. The Commander-in-Chief had to capture Tiger Hill in the next six weeks in order to reach the line of control in the subsequent two weeks. Failure of this vision would make it impossible to progress over the next eight months. That would legitimize the Pakistani occupation of Kargil. So the commander in chief scheduled his priorities. He set a strategic goal to capture Tiger in two weeks. How could he do this? In order to make this happen, the Commander-in-Chief eased agile aircraft from France. And each sortie cost a million dollars. This was a tactical plan. It worked. The cost to meet this strategic goal was irrelevant. Once Tiger Hill was captured, Commander in Chief prioritized his schedule. He had to reach the line of control and he set about setting milestones to be accomplished daily, weekly. This was an operational plan. India regained its territory and restored the line of control well before the weather turned hostile. Jai Hind. What are the lessons we learn? There are four levels of planning. Strategic, tactical, operational, budgeting. 
A vision is the snapshot of what you wish to become. Strategic planning is a vision deployment exercise. For strategic plan, we must schedule our priorities. For operational planning, we must prioritize our schedule. Leaders must take full responsibility, accountability for planning. execution can be deployed. So now over to you, Dr. Vijay Agarwal. You may wonder why am I talking about Cargill to a healthcare audience? You have succeeded with polio pulse. I have a wish that Dr. Vijay Agarwal and the Kaho team contain the coronavirus epidemic. Thank you. I think uh, from that point of view, your chat today, your fable is a fantastic fable and very timely. Very timely to, I think, remind ourselves that uh, strategic planning and strategic thinking are one of the most essential components. And let me say that Cargill may have happened only once and we might have had another one or such occasions in the army. In healthcare, there is a Cargill almost happening every week. And of course, there is a major Cargill happening nowadays across the world. The problem is that uh, it has been well recognized. In fact, there was a survey done by uh, some of the leading magazines, which showed that number one, I would say inputs that is needed in leaders uh, is the strategic thinking. However, the Harvard Business Review showed that only 23% of the leaders exhibited uh, the component of strategic thinking to some degree. And to top it all, they also said that bad strategy has been shown to be the number one cause for bankruptcy of organizations across the world. And from that point of view, I think your fable is a very good reminder for all uh, the people, I would say, especially in healthcare. And today uh, I'm besides all the participants and anybody feels like, of course, can his hand, but we also had invited uh, Mr. Samir Mehta, who is the CEO of the Mehta Hospitals in Chennai, Dr. Narendra Nath, who is the operational head of the MS Ramaya Medical College and Hospitals and Dr. Seema Bhargav, and she is the diagnostic chief of Sir Gangaram Hospital. So we have these illustrious people and I'm sure that uh, we, we will try to see that how can, and, and I think that's where uh, whatever was reviewed and they said that 23% of the leaders, uh, because they were not looking at only the healthcare leaders. I have a hunch that if that was to be carried out in the healthcare, that percentage may go down further because we react uh, much more rather than doing a strategic planning and thinking. And I can, I think also make a difference between strategic thinking and planning. I think planning is especially in healthcare is what you may have to do uh, every now and then. Uh, you may have to do it every quarter or every month. You can think of what my strategic plan will be, but strategic thinking is something that probably has to be alive all the time. And uh, especially in uh, a situation like what we are going today, and that is of this COVID where this virus is uh, changing colors 
uh, almost every day and the whole scenario is uh, changing so rapidly that it is baffling uh, people all over so i think there is no doubt about it that uh, we can all play a role in that how can we apply this lessons learned from this fable to see that can how can we win over this cargill of covid 19 first of all i would like any comments from uh, dr narendra nath how do you see this learning good evening uh, to both of you i think it is a a uh, wonderful uh, topic as you said uh, we as hospital uh, managers uh, we face situations like cargill almost uh, every single day and uh, the issue is uh, what i have mean my experience i found is in uh, hospitals is always uh, management by crisis and uh, each day if you Uh, there is no management by objectives each day when we go uh, to the field thinking that today i do a set of things based on uh, uh, the future uh, goal but unfortunately there will be 100 more things comes in the way and uh, so you have to clear the 100 more one things even before addressing the uh, the planned uh, activities so it's like a war like situation and the leader in command have more challenges uh and to uh, overcome the unplanned activities than the planned uh, activities so uh it's a war like situation day to day and uh, where we need to face and uh, the more second thing is uh, the support system the hospital is always a resource constraint uh, situation we have a lot more resource constraint and uh, our energies also should go towards how do we mobilize the resources be it uh, manpower material and also money and uh, this is the biggest challenges we face and uh, but still on the ground the we have customers who are always looking at us whether we deliver the uh, the goods and the whether the outcome is as per the requirement and the standard uh, so uh, i think sir we explained the how cargill was achieved and how much strategic planning is required and uh, the leader has to uh, prepare himself uh, so well to meet the uh, challenges on day to day basis and healthcare is no less or uh, almost similar situation and uh, i think we need to lot uh, learn from the army strategic way of planning and inculcate into the healthcare and see how far we can more uh, bring in a systematic way of achieving the or our implementing the strategy i think this is uh, my experience uh, which i have gone through in last 20 years in the healthcare so oh, thank you narendra because you highlighted one very important uh, facet that is that uh, most hospitals will work under resource crunch sir and when you work with resource crunch that is when the element of strategy uh, takes a upper hand you know That's if right. there is no resource crunch lot of planners etc you know you can uh, carry on your life but you said very very clearly and i that's where i feel that this element of uh, strategic thinking and unfortunately in a situation like covid the uh, the let us say the this power of strategic thinking and planning is lying much more at the hands of the people where i cannot inject them with that strategic thinking the but yes we can definitely discuss certain uh, certain milestones and certain aims that just like the tiger hill here the tiger hill is to uh reverse the trend you have to contain the uh, epidemic and let's understand the the weapons which are available 
which were available at that time of air force and army and navy Sir. this time uh, we have of course the what they call as the uh, sms that is the social distance mask and uh, hygiene uh, that is sanit sanitization but more than that is the vaccine we do not have the infrastructure today in the country to uh, provide care for all the people and unfortunately certain strategies which could have worked for example lockdown worked at at one time it cannot work again and again and may become a catastrophe to my mind so i think is dr sima would you like to take this talk a little forward to see that how can we contribute from this thinking towards the covid management or any other aspects of healthcare good afternoon to everyone thank you mr lulaf your cargill quality fables encompass a very wide canvas i know dr vijay has talked about our healthcare system but uh, the white canvas is that a homemaker with four little kids demanding individual attention and an admiral on a nuclear submarine have their respective tiger hills and therefore have to schedule their priorities as you have very clearly clearly uh, given us the way forward and then prioritize their schedules so 70% of medical therapeutic decisions are made on the basis of diagnostic results i'm talking about diagnostic results because i am a diagnostician myself thus just as the chapter of uh, tiger hill before the first snow, the capture of tiger hill before the first snowfall in the region was paramount to restoration of the loc in medical testing laboratories reporting each analyte within its clinically relevant turnaround time is crucial for instance with respect to well the largest killer let me talk about myocardial infarction we schedule all our priorities to getting the troponin results to our cardiologists as soon as we can and thereafter we prioritize the rest of our schedule accordingly so that this happens and this becomes our tiger hill capture in importance and effectiveness this involves strategic planning intense training of the staff constant upgrading of relevant technology and many other smaller uh, what should i say procedures and therefore our quality becomes customer driven and our decision making incorporates not just knowledge and experience but also ideas and hope and as dr vijay has very rightly put we are all uh, in the medical field we have our tiger hills every day every moment probably especially in the clinical side and uh, i will not comment on covid because we haven't yet reached um, reached the reach where we can actually make a difference we have done a lot we i think the number if you take sheer numbers our country has vaccinated the maximum possible but that's not enough so i don't really know how we can go forward to that uh, dr vijay if you have some suggestions that would be really great yes so just like i mean let's understand i think for example this projection of the highest number of uh, people have been vaccinated in our country is extremely misleading because suddenly you are changing the uh, wave you are projecting the statistics so you have to see that what percentage of population are we vaccinating and then you will find that we are probably one of the uh, bottom of the uh, of the other countries percentage of population vaccinated so i think the there is no doubt that the vaccination uh, story uh, should have been taken i think with a lot with a lot more vision and lot more uh, i would say foresight we need to have been uh, i think uh, today or yesterday they have now given uh, this thing to the third vaccine sputnik we need to kind of bring in as many vaccines as many players you see there are uh, there is one state which is contributing to 50 to 60% of the cases in the country does it require a rocket scientist to say that 
we need to probably vaccinate the whole state at a at, at a absolutely uh, very very on an urgent basis to say the least but probably we were not able to do because we don't have enough uh, vaccines uh, available so somewhere along the line as i said that as far as that strategic planning and thinking is concerned like the role we could play even when we talk about the polio eradication unfortunately it was somewhere along the line our uh, people who are at the helm of affairs in the country sometimes they fail to understand the impact of taking a timely decision which can save uh, i think lots of lives and lot of miseries that one yes what i am hearing is that your tiger who is vaccination and unless that is tackled we will not be able to roll out a containment of covid-19 besides the uh, besides the appropriate covid behavior which is again yes. uh, okay you know, you know that's the other thing so we have two tiger hills you can't say that covid behavior uh looking at the examples that have been around yeah ela and uh you look at the polling meaning It's ridiculous. Absolutely. So leaders have to walk their talk. Absolutely. People listen to what you say; they believe what you do. And if you're not doing it, I don't believe it. So we've got two tiger hills. And. I'd like to understand what role can Kaho play with you. Uh, what role? I mean, we have been, of course, uh, uh, individually and collectively, we have emphasized the role of uh, vaccination. We do not know because, as I said, that uh, unfortunately, in this kind of a situation. what is kind of making people take the decisions that they take but sometimes i think not taking a right decision at the right time in healthcare costs me a life we see it on a day to day basis all clinicians have seen it that and not only that i would say for example an early diagnosis can make a difference in the issue of life and death even in a cancer patient you diagnose it early you treat it early here if you do not diagnose so for example the case positivity rates in in a, any particular geography like let's say in delhi the case positivity rates had come down to i think 0.2 or 0.3 and slowly it started to rise it became 0.3 0.4 0.5 0.75 it is not something that has this catastrophe of the second wave has not come on us suddenly there were early tell tale signs and there are very i would say knowledgeable people who have to work on these early signs and take appropriate actions today the the positivity rates in a in a state like delhi has gone to 12 13 from point 2 so i think the 
probably there will have to be some other sometimes even the non healthcare bodies uh, like the industry and everything may have to also come together to do this brainstorming we are not saying but we can do this brainstorming because these kind of i would say night curfews and partial lockdown or showing that all right you cannot travel from here to there these are all political gimmicks to my mind they are not going to serve any purpose people have to be made responsible for their own lives also you have got to kind of say that you go into a socially responsible or uh, covid responsible behavior this is it this is the problem there is not enough the thing is that today to find a bed for a covid positive patient is becoming a problem the statements would come no we have enough beds so there is no strategy to even i would say differentiate there are lot of lot of covid patients who probably need uh, only observation or only oxygen one can i am sure turn lot of hotels which are lying today closed or uh, running on very low capacity to convert them into uh, such places so that all the tertiary care hospitals should be made available for more serious patients so anyway the, but i would say i wish this fable was being listened to by the people uh, but anyway uh, what i feel is that we have our own cargoes to deal with on a day to day basis so you schedule your priorities yes, absolutely and that's the uh, great lesson which can come only out of your strategic planning it is only a strategic planning which can lead to scheduling your prioritizing or prioritizing what should you be doing first what would you do second and that i think all i mean healthcare leaders from that point of view are i mean fighting day to day battle like what dr narendra nath said is something that we all live with but wish that we had more resources and i would say little more i would say economic health in the healthcare sector can also lead to a much better uh, or much less stressful experience for the healthcare workers cargill had a winter coming in august yes which set the timeline strategic goals don't have to be long term yeah i i would say now uh, again uh, we must also reiterate that the first action of the government to make a lockdown and all was fairly sensible in the sense that we had absolutely no preparedness for dealing with covid at that time and uh, that is something that uh, that lockdown helped us in stalling the spread of the uh, uh, virus at that stage and in preparing the healthcare infrastructure uh, we did not have any ppe we did not have mask and you saw that the countries country i mean the various industries they came into action and produced all those things so i think the first wave was tackled in fact i mean i was listening to this program of cut the clutter by shekhar gupta is a very renowned journalist and he was comparing it with the first innings and second innings of what we faced with australia where we had a very significant first innings lead but then we probably were so complacent in the second innings that we were all out in 36 runs so he says that it is that self congratulatory mode and or our complacence that has resulted into the second wave uh, shocking us 
and we have a third wave also happening in europe yeah i mean that i'm saying that uh, at the moment uh, probably if uh, i would say that if one was to consent i was to concentrate i'll concentrate all my energy in your state to see that there are 50 to 60% of cases coming from that state it's not a small matter and therefore if i am saying even as an experiment if we were to vaccinate all the people out there to see can I, can i reverse the trend there or not what's happening instead of looking at it from any other uh, spectrum or angle yes sir so once again i think uh, this was a definitely a very great lesson uh, and very great story and as usual with the i will say typical suresh lula style very nicely illustrated and narrated so you are a great storyteller thank you thank you <laughs> next week we will have uh next month yeah table which is of a healthcare environment okay so red bags and green bags okay i'm sure it's so interesting solutions don't have to be complicated yes the simplicity of a solution makes us feel it's not right thank you so much and uh, we look forward to your feedback as to how can we improve this process thank you so much i look forward to you becoming the champion for covid-19 <laughs> thank you sir thank you so much <laughs> okay